Hi guys! Welcome back. I know I said in the last video that you'd probably be seeing me soon in a new place, but I guess before I get in there I have to go through a test of sorts? I'm sure it'll be fun. But in the meantime, I got this super cool uniform that I can use on my shifts. How cool is that? Anyway, I'm gonna start training for the test, but it's a bit far off, so I'll just update you when something cool happens. Until then, take a look at this new video I made where I show you how I draw my characters' bodies. See ya! When I draw my characters, I follow a simple three-step process, much like with my arms. First is the line art sketch, then I create the body shapes, and then I detail the shapes by erasing, funny enough. First thing I do with my line art is figure out the direction that they're going to go in. I took like one course on gesture drawing and this is really what I use it for. You want to draw the major line from their head to the most dominant limb, so whatever you think will stand out more to you when you start filling in their shape. It can be a leg, arm, foot, hand, whatever. It's really helpful for me when I create larger pieces and I need to get the composition down fast, but it's only used for the unseen framework since obviously um, it doesn't make sense without the actual picture. It's only used to make way for the actual line art that you're going to be doing to fill in the rough shape of your character in the scene. It shouldn't take too long because once again it's only the rough sketch of your character. When I start with the line art sketch, I always start with a square head because I saw it in a tutorial once from uh, Cynix Design, I think, and it really helps me. Connect your head to your gesture line and start with the upper body. My biggest points here are the shoulders, ribs, and abdomen. The shoulder line actually follows the lines of the traps for me here. The ribs are an upside down V and the abdomen is a circle, all for very good reason. I use the abdomen circle because it's a good way to build a base for larger people because it helps me adequately size the hips with the stomach, which makes for a much more believable body. It's the same for average sized people too, since the circle is not actually what you're drawing around, um, but it's the guide for the hips. Now that we understand the abdomen circle, let's get to the ribs. I use the upside down V because these two points here are very important to character anatomy. They show where the true ribs end and are important for characters that are agile, emaciated, or just bending. So I set them as a main point in my character drawing. Then onto the lower body because yes, we're skipping the arms for now. We have the hips, thighs, legs, and feet. For the hips, I use a regular V to emphasize these points here. In human anatomy, there are hip points that can stick out at times called the iliac crests. These are where your hips start. When it comes to the legs, they're composed of the thigh and lower leg, which are connected to the hips by the acetabulum, which creates a small dip in the hips or the hip dip. The thighs and legs themselves are usually lumped together in their creation as a sort of S all the way down to the feet. That S is caused by the quadriceps muscles of the upper leg and then the straight shot of the shins of the lower legs and can still be seen in emaciated people just because we all have muscles there regardless of, you know, our state of being. When it comes to the feet, I like to keep it simple when making a body since most of my characters have shoes on. The feet aren't just 90 degree angles on the ground. They have parts to them, including the heel, arch, and triangular shape made from the metatarsals. So when I draw the feet, I create two triangles, one for the heel and then one for that arch that's created by those metatarsals. Now we can go back up to the arms and use the legs to measure out how long our arms are going to be. The finger should end about at the midline of the thigh. And I have a video about drawing simple arms on my channel as well if you need a more in-depth course about the arms specifically. This is really as deep as I get with my sketch for my character, since my characters are inside of scenes and are a bit more simplified because of that. There are plenty of videos that teach more in-depth courses for anatomy for specifically character art that are great too. Now we're moving on to shapes, which for the most part follow the sketch. It's basically used to outline the basic shapes of the character that will be occupying the space. For example, if you have a character with armor, 
You would be creating the shape of the armor in a rough sketch to determine where it will be on your character and in the world you're putting your character in. I'm going to be making three examples just so we can get a wider range of character creation. Um, I'm going to make a sort of shorter character, a regular character, and then a slightly larger character. Now these are pretty simple designs because the idea is that when you add clothing, armor, objects, scars, hair, etc., they will then become your character instead of just a base. Now the first part of the shape process is the creation of these shapes, yeah, but then there is a second part that you'll see in a second that really helps tie the piece together. I place it in the detail category for this video just because that's all I'm working with, but in reality, the real detail is the friend we made along the way. The real detail will be the clothing and stuff you add on to it. So in this step, I like to use a recent technique I just learned how to use. I call it the erase technique. Not sure if that's the actual terminology, but hey, you know, names, whatever. Anyway, the purpose behind using it is to erase what you don't want to see and then add here and there to create the form that you actually want to see without feeling like you can't adjust. This has been a really great tool for me, especially with my newer art because of how simple it makes shaping. That coupled with my coloring process makes it a lot easier for me to create shapes, take away shapes, create light, darkness, what have you, because it's basically just adding colors on top of colors to make the illusion of shapes. I'm hoping that my art will get more and more detailed as I learn and gain more references, and when that happens, this technique will really come in handy. As I'm working on this third character here, I'm already happy that the rough sketch guidelines worked out so well, because you can see the stomach well, but it's not so overwhelming because the character isn't some monster or deformed creature, it's just a guy, and the size is believable for it just being a guy. I'm going to go a little bit more in depth about the erasing technique, and I'm going to show you how flexible it is using a finished character. I'm just adding a leg strap to this character, but it's way easier to do since I can just erase where I need to. That's why I use that technique for drawing my bodies. Now I'm going to recap because that was kind of a lot to go through. The three levels I use for drawing bodies is lines, shapes, and details. During the line sketch, you're creating the framework of your character, starting with the head and gesture line, and then the shoulders following the line of the traps, the ribs with an upside down V, and then the abdomen with a circle for the upper body. The hips are drawn with a V following the curve of the abdomen, then the thighs and legs, and then the two triangles for the feet. Then you've got shape, which is basically just a rough placement of, well, shapes. <laughs> to determine the shape of your character and whatever they have on them. And lastly, for this part of the character at least, is detail, where you really create the outline of your character, create the objects that you want to see on them, add clothing, weapons, items, etc. by using the erasing technique. It really helps, I promise. I think that's it for this tutorial. I hope it helps you as much as my process helps me create characters. Everybody has a different style, so if this doesn't work for you, I encourage you to keep looking around. You'll find something that's perfect for you if you just don't give up. Hopefully the next time you see me, I'll be a magical protector of the city, or whatever that name is, and I'll be one step closer to making my parents proud. As always, I'll see you next time. Thank you for being here. Bye!